Porto, the second largest city in Portugal, and from which the country derived its name. At its center is the Praça da Liberdade, a large square that is guarded by a statue of King Dom Pedro IV on horseback. The 76 meter high Torre dos Clarigos is the symbol of Porto and in the middle of the 18th century was erected on a rock at the city's highest point. Built by Nicolao Nassoni, the interior of the Baroque church emanates peace and tranquility. Porto has always been a city of commerce. From the early Middle Ages, the nobility were forbidden to settle in the city, were only allowed to stay for three days and were prohibited from building palaces here. This ruling remained in force until the 17th century and even the king did not own a residence here. Instead, relying on the hospitality of the bishop's palace. From the Lion Well, the Igreja do Carmo comes into view. Of particular interest is the remarkable external wall toward the east that is decorated with a huge example of the Portuguese art form known as Azuleos that depicts the application of the scapulari on Carmel Mountain. The tall, three-tiered façade of the Carmelite Church was designed in charming Baroque style. A former monastery was transformed into the Sao Bento train station. Although they forgot to install ticket counters and waiting rooms, the huge, traditional Azuleo illustrations have been well maintained. The tidal and deep-cut river valley of the Douro is spanned by four bridges, of which the most impressive is the iron-built Ponte Dom Luis. The Frenchman Gustave Eiffel constructed this gigantic twin-level bridge that connects Porto with its sister town, Vila Nova de Gaia. On the rock opposite Porto is the Serra do Pilar Monastery. It dates back to the Christian earldom of Portucalia, the kingdom's original birthplace. The interior of the monastery's church contains a richly decorated altar and many extraordinary statues of saints that indicate the deep religious belief of the people. From here, there is a most beautiful view over the old town of Porto that clings to the granite rock the gigantic bridge, and also the river valley deep down below. Vila Nova de Gaia is the name of the head office of the port wine cellars. With their billowing sails, it looks as though the ships are eager to transport their cargoes of the world famous port wine. On the opposite bank, Ribeira, is Porto's oldest and most traditional district. Its picturesque houses providing a perfect frame for the popular tourist port. During the 13th century, Franciscan monks settled here against the will of the powerful bishop Pedro Salvadori and founded this monastery that was completed in 1425.
During the siege of Porto by Napoleon's armies, the monastery was set on fire but subsequently became a military base. The impression given by the abundant Baroque carvings and gold leaf decorations that were added during the 17th and 18th centuries is overwhelming. In addition, there are also numerous statues of saints and paintings that represent early examples of church art. The church is called the Golden Church. The Baroque interior of the Golden Church leaves a lasting impression on all who see it. Directly in front of the monastery is the Caro Electrico, an electric tram that travels alongside the river, passing the old quarter of Miragaya and to a museum. The museum was created in an old tram shed an atmospheric setting for a fascinating collection of historic trams. The cathedral dominates the city like a medieval fortress and is watched over by Henry the Seafarer. He was born here in 1394. He was the son of King Joaos and an Englishwoman, Philippa de Lancastre. The country's maritime relationship with England was sealed through this marriage, the first alliance between the two seafaring nations. This defensive church dominates the view from the highest point of the old town's granite rock. The walls of the open passages above the cloister are decorated with azulejos that date back to the 18th century. The Gothic cloister is of typical Portuguese design. Elegant and strong arcades supported on pillars that contain a perforated frieze. The religious works that are exhibited in the vestry contain some rare and unique treasures. There is a dark and shadowy Roman longhouse. A huge room has its foundations in the shape of a cross with Gothic arcades and is crowned by a granite dome. Porto, Portugal's birthplace in the north of the country, a cultural capital of Europe whose glorious spirit of the past has managed to survive the centuries.